So what you got a question about? Um, number 23. So active and passive. All right. So was your question about uh, like is it active or is it passive? Or? No, it's changing. It's changing. Okay. Yeah, there's a lot going on in that. Yeah. It's one of those. It's not super duper simple. So mm -hmm. what do we do? Um, just to back it up for other folks, you've probably already done this, but back it up for other folks so that we can make more sense of what we're doing as we work our way through it. Let's first work our way through the sentence and break it down into what are the actions, what are the subjects, what are the blah, blah, blahs. So, as was stated by the press agent in the Tuesday meeting, comma, the line president will be investigated by the attorney general. Man, there's a lot going on there. Uh, what's an action in that sentence? We'll worry about what's most important later, but just what's an action? Was stated. Stating in the past. Okay, that's definitely an action. Who, uh, do we know who did that action? Okay, so the press agent is the subject for that action. All right, any other actions in that sentence or action y kind of things? Hmm. Investigated. Investigated. Will be investigated, so that's sometime in the future. I think the perfectly correct for that is maybe the perfect future, maybe, I don't know. Mm -hmm. We'll talk a little bit about verb tenses today and the reason why I don't know exactly what that tense is called, yet I'm still teaching this class is because my tense advice is keep it simple, right? Um, but anyway, so this is some kind of action, whatever the exact verb tense is called, don't worry about that. Who will be doing the investigating? Attorney General. So the Attorney General is the subject for that action. Any other action-y like things in this sentence? Did somebody say something about lying? Lying. lying. Well, I am lying, right? I am lying. Well, that's an action. Or I'm lying about the fact that blah, 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 blah. I don't know what the verb tense is. Maybe I'm lying about that. Who knows? But you've got two kinds of lying. Uh, here's the thing. You've got verbs that can be used as that is a verb. You are in the act of lying. Um, you've also got verbs that can be used as adjectives, right, that describe qualities about. Like, Dr. Fricky is that <laughs> lying teacher, right? So that's just, you know that's a quality that I have. Even if I'm not, not lying to you in the moment, I'm likely to in the next moment, right? So. Lying president, I would say that line, the lying president is probably either a subject or an action or an object here. That it's like the whole phrase, that's it. Does that make sense? Because it doesn't seem that the president is actively lying in that sentence. So the lying president, let's figure out if the lying president is an object or a subject. Um, is the lying president doing anything in that sentence or any of those actions applying? Okay, so then is the lying president receiving any of those actions? <laughs> Will be investigated in the future. So that action is going to go to that object. So the back end of this sentence has this structure. Object, action, subject. What's that a signal that that back end of the sentence phrase might be? Active or passive? See, mouthing the word. If this were its own sentence, the lying president will be investigated by the attorney general. If that were, forget about the first part. If that was all the sentence there was, would that be active or passive? Passive. Why? Because I think like the attorney general is like the, like he needs to go right? Right, so one clue is, well, if the subject comes last, that's a good clue that it's probably passive. And then we can also do the hard test. Let's drop the subject, see if we still have a complete sentence. The line president will be investigated. Could we say that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So therefore, it must be passive. So this back end of the sentence, after the comma, 
This is a independent clause. It can stand by itself. And in fact, it's a grammatically simple sentence if it were standing by itself as an independent clause because it has only one subject, only one action, only one object. And in this wording, it is passive. Okay? So we know right off the bat, when we rewrite this sentence, we've got to do something with that clause to make it active. Right? So we got that out of the way. Now this front thing. Um, as was stated, stating, uh, uh, stating sometime in the past, we know who did the stating, the press agent. So the press agent is the subject for that action. And what was stated? What did the press agent say? What did she state in the meeting? Hmm. Yeah, this whole mess over here. All this, I mean, one way of looking at this back-end phrase is that it's an independent clause all by itself. Another way of looking at it is that this whole thing is the object that's receiving that action. It's the fact. The press agent stated the fact in the Tuesday meeting. Well, what is the fact? Well, that the line president will be investigated. Right? Okay. What's this in the Tuesday meeting, then? I mean, we've got a press agent who's stating something. The press agent is stating this fact. What, what, what is that? Is it an object? Certainly not a subject. I don't think that Tuesday meeting was doing anything active. What is it? I don't know. That's not rhetorical. I'm asking you. I don't know what to call it. What would you call it? If you were making something up to just kind of help you think through the structure of the sentence, what would you call that? I don't know, I'm asking, because the next class might ask a question about this one too, and I would like to sound a little smarter in my next class. Maybe, maybe the glasses alone won't cut it. What is it? What can we call that? I don't know, make something up. What is it? Added information. Added info? You can take it out, you can still say, as was stated by the press agent. As was stated by the press agent, comma, the line president will be investigated by, or we could say, uh, the press agent stated that the line president will be investigated by the attorney general. I couldn't say that. I mean, it doesn't seem to be necessary to main thought. This is extra stuff. You just want to call it extra stuff. Okay. Extra stuff. Let's give it a nice acronym, ES. Not to be consumed. Con um, confused with subjects. Let's give it up. Let's just call it E. Extra. Or let's call it EX. Because like an X somebody, it can be just ditched. Right? So it's an X. There we go. Okay, now let's pretend we want to keep the X around for some reason. Maybe we have joint custody of, I don't know, not to get too dark, but if we were going to keep this around, what do we want to attach it to? What does it seem to me most strongly attached to? Any ideas? I mean, I actually have one for this. But I want to see if you folks have a better one. Like, if you were going to make it part of one of these subjects or actions or objects, is there anything that you would like? Here's what I would think about doing. I would think about what if we made this action, like this whole phrase, stated in the Tuesday meeting. Maybe? Does that sound? Because I don't want to forget it. I don't want to like forget to leave it into however we move this around. So I, I like the idea of like thinking of it as attached to something instead of just X. <laughs> so that way this would be like, I don't know what the technical term would be, but it's extra information about when this action happened. Right? So it makes for a whole descriptive verb <laughs> phrase. Like, for example, um, I laid down on the floor, or I could say, I laid down in Tuesday's class on the floor. Right? In Tuesday's class, then becomes part of the laying down. Right? I like thinking of it like that. You got buy in on that? Like that? Okay. So, how's about? In our rewrite, we see if we can keep that in the Tuesday meeting with the stated. Let's try to do that. 
Okay, so this uh, front of the uh, uh, sentence. First of all, we've got a subject and an action, if you buy this idea that this extra sort of information is part of the action, maybe. Then we've got a subject and an action, and that's it. And also, let's say it out loud. As was stated by the press agent in the Tuesday meeting. Can that stand by itself? I can't believe that as was stated by the press agent in the Tuesday meeting. No, now it sounds really horrible. So what kind of clause is that? Independent? It can't stand by itself, so it's in. Oh, it's a dependent. Sorry, I, I didn't. I misheard you. Still early in the morning. Yeah, so it's a dependent clause. So that explains the punctuation. We've got a dependent clause in front of an independent clause. That's why we must have to have a comma there, right? Because we went over that. And in this dependent clause at the beginning of the sentence, as it's written currently, we have an action in front of a subject. That's, again, a good clue that this is probably not active. Because if it were the start of an active sentence, it would probably be the press agent stated in the Tuesday meeting that blah, 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 blah. It would probably be something like that. So those are two good, well, first of all, we know the back end of the sentence is definitely passive. The front end of the sentence, when you've got only a subject and an action and the action comes first, that's a pretty good clue that it's a passive-y kind of clause. So I would say this is definitely a passive sentence as written. Did you go through all that when you were attacking the sentence? I mean, I knew it was passive. Right. <laughs> you just kind of intuited that? You didn't? Yeah. Well, and it just like, kind of sounded weird when I read okay. it. Okay. Right. Well, now that we have gone through all this work to like identify all the subjects and actions and objects, we can find all the X stuff left over, and we've thought about that and where that might maybe want to go in a rewrite. And we thought about the structure of the sentence a lot. Let's see if this can help us with our rewrite decisions. If nothing else, it prepares us for the fact that we're probably going to have a lot of choices to make. Because unlike a grammatically simple sentence where there's only one of each, so there you go, you call it a day, we've got a couple actions, we've got a couple, so this is going to be maybe a mess. So deep breath. Let's get ready. But before we do that, this is the point where we gotta, we got to make it a, a key decision. What's the most important action in this sentence? Grammatically. Not like commonsensically, but grammatically. What's the most important action? The reporting or the investigating? What do you think? Investigating? Why? Okay, so we know more about the investigator. Right. Because we know not only who's going to be doing the investigating, but we know who's going to be receiving the investigation. Okay, so we know more about this. I'll put a KM for that. We'll just make acronyms all over the place. So we know more about that. Okay, that's good. Sure. That could be a sign that it's more important. Um, anybody got any other ideas? Um, that's what's being stated, is that there will be an investigation. Okay. Grammatically, why does that make it more important than the stating? Okay, I guess it's not grammatically. See, and then this is where, when you're looking at a sentence in isolation with no context, it's hard not to start making up a story around it, right? Because intuitively, it seems like, well, holy shit, the president's going to be investigated. That's probably a big effing deal, right? But if this sentence were just filled with blah, 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 there was no context around it. You couldn't make up a story. You couldn't bring any preconceptions to it. Then you would have to only handle it grammatically. You, you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. so, so the fact that it seems just intuitively like the president being investigated is a big deal, Probably, but we don't know what the context is. Does anybody have any like counter arguments for why the stating 
why they think, like, does anybody think the stating might be more important? Anybody? Am I going to give stating love? I could count on my own. Okay, cool. Look at you being um, all Socratic. As was stated, to be more important because the press agent is the one doing, like, the reporting. And okay. so it's reporting on what's happening somewhere else. So maybe that would make it more How's about this? What comes first? The stating or the investigating? The stating. What's the very first thing in the sentence? That action. Is that maybe a clue? We know more about this, but this, that looks nice. It's, it's a CF. It comes first. In fact, whoever wrote this sentence originally was so concerned with making stating the very first action that they even separated it from this extra information that described more about it. See what I mean? They went action, subject doing that action, and then some extra stuff before the rest of the sentence. And usually, and the reason why I'm kind of steering you folks towards this a little bit, is uh, when you're looking at a sentence without any preconceptions, without making up a story around it, you're just looking at the grammar of a sentence out of context in isolation. Two really big clues as to what's more important is what do we know more about? Also, what comes first? Because what we know more about is probably like more central to the central idea of the whole sentence. And what comes first reveals a little bit about the intent of who wrote the sentence. Here, I don't know if those really help us. The third, a third clue, is what's most important to the grammar of the sentence, right? And here, you got the investigating in an independent clause. Here, you've got the stating in a dependent clause. If I just say you've got a dependent clause in front of an independent clause, what clause do you think is most important? Why would the independent clause be more important? Because it can stand by itself, sure. I mean, it's sort of by definition the main thought because it has a complete thought. So that can be a, another clue. Well, what's more vital, right? If we don't have any investigating, we don't have an independent clause. We don't have an independent clause. We don't have anything as far as complete sentence goes. If we don't have stating, well, at least we've still got this. So now we're back to the line. I mean, the investigating. But then again, the dependent clause, it comes first. I mean, maybe they chose to put a dependent clause in front of, an in, in front of the independent clause because they really wanted to emphasize that for some reason, even though it wasn't a complete thought. Because the other thing they could have done, the lying president will be investigated by the attorney general as was stated by the press agent in the Tuesday meeting. They could have just taken this, put it at the end, then we don't need a comma. It really simplifies the structure of the sentence, right? But for some reason, they chose to make it more complicated, which if they did that for a reason, assuming, and this is why when you have a style knee jerk, I'm just going to use commas because I really like to. I'm just going to put dependent clauses in front of stuff because I really like to. This is where you confuse readers. Because, like, I'm looking for grammatical clues as to what's most important when I'm skimming the sentence. If you put a dependent clause in front of an independent clause, I'm thinking that's really important for some reason. But if you're doing it just because that's what you do, then you're not helping me out. You know what I mean? So again, assuming that this was done consciously, now we're back to comes first. <sighs> so here's the thing. And this is what differentiates real world editing from like a nice, clean, crystal, clear, simplified textbook exercise. If I like had a third question about this, not only what is it active or passive, not only rewriting the opposite voice, but if I had like a third 
question on the worksheet saying, what's the most important action? I don't think that I could grade that as a, it has to be this or it has to be that. It's a judgment call. Right? But I think it's important in your mind to be clear about that, what you think is the most important. Otherwise, you can't make choices about how to rewrite the sentence and still keep the same intention, the same emphasis that the original, in your opinion, originally had. So let's, what do you want to flip a coin or what? What do you want to keep as the most important? You want to assume that, because uh, we got to decide, you want to assume that the stating is most important or the investigating is most important? What do you want to do? Let's make the investigating more important. Okay, sure, what the hell. Okay, so we're gonna shoot for that. Now I will tell you, that's gonna make it harder to rewrite. But that's okay, because the original was kind of backwards from that. But that's okay, I mean, as far as order goes, so we're gonna have to reorder stuff as well as rephrase stuff. But that's okay, we're smart, we can do it. All right, so we are going to make the investigating the most important thing in the rewrite. So to make that really clear, how's about we try to make the investigating come first? That would be a good clue. Let's, let's be a little bit more clear than the previous one was. Okay, so. We'll be investigated. Let's put it, let's write it down. We know that that's what we want to say somehow. Let's make it active. What's a good rule of thumb pattern to follow for a good active voice sentence? Something, then something, then something. What do we want to put in front of here? The yeah, let's put the subject. Let's put who's doing the invest who will be doing the investigating in front of that. Who's going to be doing the investigating? Attorney General. Okay, the Attorney General. And now the will be investigate will be the attorney general will be investigated. Oh no 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 no! Now we got to go back and reword this. How's about that? Will investigate. Now it's clear that this is the action that the attorney general is going to do. See, in the previous, because it was a passive voice clause the will be investigated, we had to reword it that way because we started with the president, right? But since we're starting with the actual subject, now we can have a much simpler verb tense. So the attorney general will investigate who? Who's the attorney general going to investigate? The line president. The line president. Okay, now we could stop it there. We could just put a period, right? And then the rest, we could maybe figure out how to make a separate sentence. But because the person who wrote this original sentence thought it was important to keep all that stuff together, let's go with that and keep all that stuff together. Uh, and so somewhere, and we'll worry about punctuation later. But then in the back half of the sentence, we're going to have stated Stated in the Tuesday meeting. And we want to keep in the Tuesday meeting right next to the stated because we, I, we agreed that we thought maybe this was extra information that pertained to that. Let's make it a whole clause. Okay. Stated in the Tuesday meeting. Okay, who did the stating? The press agent. So let's follow the same pattern. We want to make sure that every phrase is active, so let's Follow the like standard, don't have to think too much, subject, action, everything else pattern. So the press agent. <laughs> Stated in the Tuesday meeting. We got anything else? Anything else we didn't account for? Any other info? Okay. 
Let's put a period on it. Not a semicolon. Period. Okay. Now let's go back and look at the uh, look at the uh, punctuation. See if we need any to clean up any grammar here to coordinate these thoughts. The Attorney General will investigate the line president. This is an independent clause. Okay. Now forget the words. Just we have a train car that is an independent clause. Okay. Back into this sentence is another clause. The press agent stated in the Tuesday meeting. The press agent stated in the Tuesday meeting. I can't believe that the press agent stated in the Tuesday meeting. Is that a complete sentence? You don't think so? You don't think so? Anybody think so? Anybody want, you think so? Why do you think so? Because I mean, there's, it has the subject action. And, well, it doesn't have an object, but it's just kind of. It doesn't have an object, but it still sounds OK? It does sound OK. Kind of weird, but okay. Let's take a vote. Let's take a vote. How many people think that the press agent stated in the Tuesday meeting isn't? And this is nice because it's like right down the middle. How many people think that the press agent stated in the Tuesday meeting is an independent clause, like it can stand alone? Or I guess this would be. No, no, no. no. It's, you can't be like mm, well, yes or no. Yes or no. You got one, two. Anybody else? That's it. Really. Shocked. Okay, how many people, and you gotta vote. You gotta vote. You gotta vote. <laughs> okay, how many people think, no, that's not an independent clause, it's gotta be a dependent clause? D are you voting? Okay, so now you got three for the other one? And then everybody else? Okay, so that's like three versus what? 10, 11, something like that? Vastly outvoted. But if you're an independent clause, that's okay. You can just walk away. Right? Even small, small countries can be independent if they've got an independent clause um, in their contract. Okay, so here's the thing. Technically, it's not an independent clause because you've got a subject and an action, but that ain't enough. However, and that's what makes it sound kind of awkward. However, it also to the other ears, like, well, I don't know, it's, it's okay. Because here's the thing. If we think of this formerly extra stuff as like kind of the object, right? I mean, it, it's not what was being stated, but it's where the stating was happening. So it's kind of objecty, yeah. So then, with the sentence like "someone walked yesterday," that's not an independent clause because there's no object. See again, again, it's like well, I don't know. I don't want to ditch this. Someone walked yesterday. That seems right. And this is where, and I'm sure that you could, with hardcore diagramming and going to like a grammar book that thick, you could figure out. Okay, I think that Dr. Fricky might be lying about this whole thing. I think it actually is an independent clause because I think that this is an object. And, and see, this is why I'm bringing this up. The way that I present grammar is a very real world, this works most of the time. Most of the time this helps you see possibilities to especially simplify sentences. But it's kind of loosey-goosey. I mean, the, like the practically simple sentence definition, you're not going to find that in a grammar book. This whole approach of like, hey, let's figure out punctuation by just looking at what kind of clause it is, you're probably not going to find that in a grammar book as, as like a, let's follow this procedure. So sometimes it breaks down. You know, just like uh, general relativity breaks down at the subatomic level. That's the reason why you got a lot of smart physicists trying to take quantum dynamics and connect it to relativity because they both work but not in the same realm okay once so you get into cases where my approach is not entirely clear so for the grammar worksheet because I understand this for the grammar worksheet depending on how you look at it if you say this is an independent clause I think that is an independent clause then 
you got to figure out some way to take these two independent clauses and jam them together with some kind of punctuation. The way to do that is with a comma and a conjunction. What kind of conjunction do you want to put here? Yeah, let's go with as. The Attorney General will investigate the live president, comma, as the press agent stated in the Tuesday meeting. <coughs> do we like that? Is that okay? Okay. What if we decide that, no, let's say that this is a dependent clause. I like that view better. Then what do we do, punctuation-wise? What's the rule for you've got a dependent clause that comes after an independent clause? Nothing. So the Attorney General will investigate the lying president the press agent stated in the Tuesday meeting. Do we like that? The Attorney General will investigate the lying president the press agent stated in the Tuesday meeting. Yeah? Can't you say, this may be wrong, but can't you say the press agent stated in the Tuesday meeting that the Attorney General will investigate the lying president? So it's and this is where I was getting back to, like, because when you do that, the press agent stated in the Tuesday meeting that the da 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 da. What's now the most important action? Uh, state. I guess the stating. Yeah, because now it comes first, right? Okay. Now it's pretty clearly being done by the main subject because the press agent's coming very first in the sentence. Okay. It's integral to the rest of the sentence, you know. So is that wrong? No, I'm saying that goes back to what did we want to emphasize? Okay. You know. So and that's why I was like, this is going to be. A, more of a challenge. Right? But we can figure out how to do it. And this is the thing. It comes down to, now it's a style thing of like, how, who are we writing for and how do we want to help them read? If I want to say, the Attorney General will investigate the line president, the press agent stated in the Tuesday meeting, that's kind of like saying, I want to present this as, this is the most important stuff. It's a long sentence. Maybe I'll suggest to them that they bail when they get to a certain point. I'm not going to put any punctuation with, with conjunctions because if I do this, now a skimmer is going to say, oh, I've got a whole other complete thought here. I don't think I'm going to bail. I think I have to read this. See what I mean? Also, maybe you decide that the comma as sounds a little bit better. Probably most people would make that style of <coughs> But you have a defense for it now. You can say, well, you can look at this. And then you've got an example, too, of like what you came up with, which is beautiful, by the way. However, if we instead want to say, you know, let's go back and rethink that whole what's the most important action. If the stating was most important, how could we rewrite this? And then we come up with, as you came up with, the press agent stated in the Tuesday meeting that blah, 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 blah. Maybe that sounds a lot better. Yeah, let's go with that. And again, you can defend it grammatically by saying, well, there's a good reason. There's at least as many reasons to think that the stating was as important in the original sentence as the investigating. So, so I, again, I'm fine with either one. So there's at least three possibilities here of how you could, re well, first of all, two possibilities based on what did you decide was most important. And then if you decide that the investigating is most important, there's at least two different ways that you can defend punctuating. Very good. Is that helpful? And hopefully it didn't take you this long to like puzzle through it. Because again, you also you follow the rule of thought. Like how long did you wrestle with that before you were like, oh, screw it, I'm just going to ask a question. Maybe 15 minutes. Like I wrote this. This was probably seven minutes more than I would have. Well, I just like wrote it down and like. Did you take a stab at it? Did you write yeah, down? What did you have for a rewrite? Well, it was the same as that one, but uh -huh. I just put the president, like I said, the lying president will be investigated by the attorney general. So ah, now so but, you kept it passive. Yeah, I know. That's why I was like, I don't know how to switch it. Yeah, so the key with that was you got to change the, the verb tense. <coughs> because one of the things about verb tenses is that depending on what you're trying to attach the action to and what voice you're in, sometimes the tense changes based on just that. So will be investigated, be, and then the action, that's sort of a classic passive kind of tense mode, yeah. And when you're rewriting it, like, uh -huh. to make it active, mm -hmm. do you need to be, like, concerned about that in the Tuesday meeting? Or, like, could you write it? Well, again, here's the thing. Action? If you're editing your own stuff, you can make a command decision of, is this really important or not? 
So you, if, you if you're rewriting to, your own stuff. Yeah. But if you're rewriting someone else's stuff, Keep like that. if you're copy editing, yeah, you need to, you can't just say, oh, I think that's irrelevant because you can't be clairvoyant unless you go talk to the person who wrote it. Well, like instead of like if you still kept it, but like mm -hmm. if you if you just like flipped it, kind of like if you said in, in the Tuesday meeting, meeting, comma yeah, these are, yeah sure you could still write it that way. You could yeah. Again, though, to make it more complicated than it needed to be, because then you would be taking this and making it its own dependent clause right at the beginning. Mm -hmm. And again, remember my hopefully you're not doing that just because because if you did that in an active voice sentence. Then what you're signaling is this is the most important thing. This happened on Tuesday. So it just matters kind of like the context, like it. Yeah. Then it would be then, like for example, if you were giving a whole chronology on Monday, comma da 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 da, in the meeting on Tuesday, comma then it would make sense to like because that would so, yeah. that by, by really emphasizing that you would be helping the reader make sense of the chronology. But if it was like somebody did this, somebody did that, somebody did something else, and in the Tuesday, it, then it would. That helpful. Mm -hmm. but yeah, so that's another way. And, and again, since you don't have context here, you sure, I'll take that for the grammar version. Right. Yeah, so that's at least four different ways. Cool. And again, one of the reasons why we can rewrite this sentence so many different ways, <coughs> first of all, this isn't the only way to write it in passive voice either. So you got like at least six, eight, I mean, we can puzzle it out. There's Because we've got more than one action, more than one, see what I mean? We didn't just keep it simple. Which hopefully it's becoming more and more clear why I'm a big fan of that. Especially with some real world editing practice. Ooh, that was a lot of stuff. Touched on a lot of stuff there. Actually. And hopefully more fruitful than, well, here's the answer, period. Because you know, now, because the whole point of this is it's, it's practice. It's practice for dealing with being out in the real world, seeing an infinite number and variety of sentences and being able to make sense of them. And instead of trying to get you to memorize an infinite number of rules and procedures, and that's why I try to keep the procedures and concepts as simple as possible. It means that they don't always work in every case, but they'll work pretty quickly in most cases that you encounter. And they'll certainly work if you try to keep things simple to begin with. All right, so that was a bit of time. Um, let's do this. Let's take a break, and then I'll run through.